We all have dream games, concepts that we would love to see realized that for some reason, whether it be project scope or the game just being too niche to sell well, have no real hope of coming to fruition. I personally have always dreamed of a game that nicks the combat of a strategy RPG or tactics game with an in-depth character and dialogue system akin to an Obsidian or Bioware RPG. Well, you can imagine my surprise and elation when I first discovered Lost Eye Dolans, a game that through gameplay videos and trailers seemed to be aiming for that very target, or at least as close as I could reasonably expect. I jumped at the opportunity to try the title for myself, but I'm sad to say that it didn't quite fulfill my desires the way I'd hoped. Though, admittedly, it's nearly impossible to compete with one's dreams. What I did get out of Lost Idolans is a solid gameplay experience marred by a lot of busy work and a story so boring it nearly cured my insomnia. Given that combat is the highlight of the game, I'll start my review there. If you've played Fire Emblem, then you have a pretty good idea of what to expect from the battles in Lost Eidolons. Fights happen on a grand scale, with the player getting to control up to 10 units at a time against waves of enemy soldiers. Instead of the traditional weapon triangle, each weapon type is strong against a particular type of armor. The game also has a surprisingly robust magic and ability system that really spiced up the encounters. For example, archers have a limited number of attacks with a larger range and they can normally hit. There's also some synergy between these abilities. Mages can cast a water spell that can leave puddles, which make follow-up electric spells spread out to hit multiple nearby targets that are standing in it. There are more options here than in other similar titles thanks to these ability loadouts, and it adds to both the strategy and the power fantasy in equal measure. Because of this, I got really into my party customization. I went so far as to make a chart to plan out which characters would be leveling into which classes, which shows a heightened level of investment compared to what I normally do for these types of games. The weapon system and the combat in general become even more interesting when you're fighting monsters instead of human opponents. These enemies have weaknesses that change on a round by round basis, and to damage them properly you have to exploit each of these weaknesses to make them vulnerable to follow up attacks. Positioning is even more important here than with most other combat encounters. I loved these fights but there weren't nearly enough of them. There were only a handful over the game's entire run. That said, this is by far the most interesting mechanic the game brings to the table, and I'd love to see other games try their hand at it. While the majority of the game's combat scenarios are fun, the ball really gets dropped with the game's optional missions. There are only three different combat scenarios that make up these missions, and they're each reused a half a dozen times or so. Admittedly, these are mostly here so that you can level up unit, but there are some small side quests involved and other Boards, which will likely have you grinding through them even if you don't want to. Lost Eidolons offers you the ability to play with permadeath, meaning if a character falls in battle, you lose them for good. I played with permadeath off, and I don't regret it. It actually feels like a bit of an odd choice for this particular title because it isn't reflected in the narrative. Key characters who fall in battle will be unusable for future fights, but because they're supposedly integral to the story, they remain at your camp for future conversations. Unless, of course, the plot deems their death necessary, in which case you lose that character and all the gear you supplied them with due to no fault of your own. I found this absolutely infuriating. As infuriating as it is, I do admire the devs' desire to put narrative first. What I don't understand is how they can have such a terrible grasp of their own battle system that they give the player flat-out incorrect combat advice. I had to restart a couple of battles more than once because the strategies the game directed me to use led to my catastrophic defeat. This occurred both because of a lack of proper information being imparted and because the strategies were completely counter to the game's mechanics. In one combat scenario, I had just gained access to a new New ability, and one of my party members opened the fight by telling me I should try it out. Naively trusting the game devs, I did so immediately. 30 minutes later, as I was reaching the battle's conclusion, I found myself up against a mini-boss that my attacks were ineffective against and whose HP slowly regenerated each round. It was at this point I was told by the same party member that maybe I should try my new ability on him now because it might stop his regeneration. Except I couldn't, because it's a one-time use ability and I'd already used it at the beginning of the fight when the game first told me to do so. Rather than try and force my way through a war of attrition, I restarted the battle, knowing now that I should have saved my one shot from the mini boss. Annoying, but fine. One unclear message by the devs is a mistake that can be forgiven. 
30 minutes into my second attempt of the fight, I got to the final enemy once more and used my ability on him, only for it to do close to no damage and not benefit me in the slightest. Perplexed, I continued fighting, only for the enemy to prepare a specific attack, which I am then told to use my ability on, to interrupt. That was twice in the same encounter that the game gave unintentionally misleading information that made the fight not technically unwinnable, but extremely irritating and boring. I didn't have the heart to restart the fight again. I brute forced my way through as I deemed the tedium of that effort to be preferable to starting from scratch a third time. This is one of the worst examples of botched dev to player information sharing I've seen in a modern RPG, and I have no idea how it got through playtesting. In another combat scenario, it suggests that you send a single scout out to sneak over to a locked mine, freeing the miners so that they can revolt and cause a distraction at the front gates, while the rest of your army sneaks around back to take out the enemy leader. It sounds good on paper, but the game's mechanics are not compatible with this plan. For one, if boss enemies have even a single minion within several squares of them, their defense skyrockets to the point that they are almost invincible. This is a mechanic implemented precisely so that the players can't exploit the defeat the boss win condition. It actually works well in context of the combat system as a whole, but not at all for this particular battle plan. The second problem is that the enemy army cuts through these unarmored rebels like a hot knife through butter. Their distraction will only gain you three or so turns of respite before the enemies attacking them turn back around to attack your infiltrating unit instead. This leaves you both outnumbered and surrounded. My immediate thought after failing miserably the first time was to free the miners and have them join my main force in charging the front gate. But that's not possible, because once the miners are freed, the rest of your team automatically rushes to the back entrance of the castle, forcefully splitting your units, leaving one poor soul from your army to try and lead an untrained band of laborers against a literal fortress. If you're playing with permadeath on, you can kiss that unit goodbye. This whole scenario was particularly irritating to me, not just because it forced several restarts until I decided to forego the plan altogether, but because from a narrative standpoint, the plan goes completely against the main character's morals. The game's entire storyline centers around Eden's character arc, about how life is precious and how he can't stand to see others die, especially when it's his own fault. I guess that doesn't apply to slaves, because he doesn't bat an eye at the idea of sending all these barely armed miners to their deaths against a highly trained, heavily armored battalion. F them, I guess. I wish that this were an intentional story choice, the hero taking poor combat advice and regretting it later, but nope. Whether you use the plan or not, follow-up scenes play out as if you did, and characters sing praises about what a feat of tactical genius it was, when really, the genius strategy I used was to charge the front gates and take down the enemies one by one as they were forced to funnel through. Weren't any casualties my way either. Just saying. I wish I could say that the plot inconsistencies were the least of the game's story issues. In Lost Eidolons, you take the role of Eden, the gariest of stews, as he works his way up from being a low-wage mercenary to the commander of a vast army. The story starts predictably, with this upstart rebel trying to defend his hometown against an invading force, but grows into what is presumably meant to be an in-depth political drama. I genuinely enjoy political intrigue, but it needs to actually be intriguing. My eyes started glazing over almost immediately as the names of kingdoms I didn't care about flashed across the screen, accompanied by images of characters that I had no interest in learning about. In the last few chapters, the game's story finally, and just barely started to grab my attention as it brushed up against some compelling story ideas. Our protagonist begins to both act more like and physically resemble our antagonist. Some of his more loyal companions even remark on these changes, and the loyalty the antagonist companions have for their leader very much mirror that of the players. It all seems like the setup for a you are just as villainous as he is revelation. But no, Eden, the near-perfect protagonist, keeps strutting along like it's nothing, and the game ends without it ever being explored. The story was so paint by numbers and uninteresting that I wanted to skip the scenes outright. And many points my thumb was actually on the button, but the fact I was reviewing the game kept me from going through with it. What if some massive plot twist happened that completely shifted the story and suddenly made me interested? It didn't, of course, but now I can say that for sure instead of just assuming it. I suffered so that you don't have to.
But the point of the game's narrative isn't really the plot, it's the characters. You will spend an unreasonably large chunk of your time running around your camp, having conversations, trying to use Eden's natural charm to get these characters to slowly open up to you. You can even perform camp activities with them for bigger boosts. And there's a gift system if you really want to butter characters up. At first, I was really excited to see this. It reminded me of Dragon Age Origins. The camp conversations in that game were among my favorite moments in all of gaming. But Lost Eidolons doesn't deliver on even a fraction of that fun, because the characters are just so damn boring. The backup characters that join your camp throughout the game's run are even worse in this regard. They are just as I described them backups. They exist merely to take the place of any units you've lost had you chosen to play with permadeath on. Even with permadeath off, I was forced to rely on a few of these backups to fill out my ranks, because characters come and go as the story demands. The dev team clearly put in a lot of work to try and make these characters likable. They were all written with defined backstories and motivations, but they're so generic that it feels like they've been shaken out of a random fantasy character generator. Outside of a choice few who the writers force into advisor roles in the camp, they basically say nothing about the story, or have any reaction to the game's events beyond, oh, that battle was tough, or it's so sad we lost this person. I'm sorry to say that I never shared that sentiment. There was never a moment that I was sad when a character I was presumably meant to care about left my camp. Instead, I was angry that I lost a unit I'd spent so much time building up to be part of my core combat team. Towards the end of my playthrough, the copious amount of time I'd spent with the cast had tricked me briefly into thinking they were worthwhile company. When I try to think back on the conversations we shared, the bonding moments that I wasted so many hours on, I draw a complete blank. I swear I'm not exaggerating when I say that I can't even remember most of the characters' names. Put simply, if you play your games mostly for story, then Lost Eye Dolans isn't for you. Lost Eidolons may not have lived up to my idealistic fantasies, and if I'm being brutally honest, I don't think it lived up to its own lofty ambitions either, but that doesn't mean the game is completely without merit. Despite the many issues I have with its narrative, characters, structure, and combat advice, the battles themselves are still well designed, and that is the game's most important element. As someone who puts more importance on gameplay than story, I still had a lot of fun with it. If you're a strategy RPG fan who has already exhausted the more popular and usually higher quality options, or someone who thinks Fire Emblem looks fun, but they lack a Nintendo console to play them on, then Lost Eidolons may be worth a look. Just be prepared to skip or suffer through a lot of boring dialogue to get to the good bits. Ironically, while working on this very script, Baldur's Gate 3 came out, which actually is a realization of the dream game I'd always hoped for. Don't worry, it had no bearing on the contents of this script, just, you know, you, you should totally go play Baldur's Gate 3. I'd like to thank my generous supporters, the YouTube members, patrons, and subscribe stars to help make this all happen. Caffeine, Gabe Nunez, Nikol Hypa and Sky VL. For those that don't know, I've got some stretch goals planned for the channel. At 5,000 subscribers, I will begin reviewing either the Persona series or the Suikoden series. At 20 active supporters through Patreon, Subscribestar, YouTube memberships, I will review either Legend of Dragoon or Lost Odyssey. And at $100 a month, I will review any duology, something like The World Ends With You, Near, Dark Cloud, or whatever else you can come up with as long as it's exactly two games. That's it this time. Hope to see you all soon.